In this video, I'm going to try to explain how an MRI scan works. And for the exam, um, it, it could be coming up in your basic sciences viva, and it's quite a difficult principle to understand, and you can get yourself bogged down in quite a lot of detail. However, you want to try to keep it simple and try to create a little tutorial for the examiner if this question comes up. And I'm going to try to go through some buzzwords that you should try to use whilst explaining how an MRI scan works. And I'll draw uh, a sequence of how the MRI um, uh, manipulates the hydrogen protons to create the specific sequences that we see on our screen. So first of all, you need to say that uh, MRI scan, which is magnetic resonance imaging, manipulates hydrogen protons using a superconducting magnet. So a superconducting magnet. And it also uses radio frequency coils to cause a radio frequency pulse and impart energy on these hydrogen protons. So hydrogen protons uh, are in abundance in the human body. Uh, it's, present, uh, it's present in fat, carbohydrate, water, and it's a, it's a, it's a major uh, component uh, that can be manipulated. And each hydrogen proton will have its own uh, axis of its magnetization, and it will also have its own wobble along that axis, uh, or, or the spin along this axis. And for simplicity purposes, I'm going to draw... Uh, only four hydrogen protons, but obviously in reality there's there's many many more. However, I think four is the minimum uh, number needed to explain the principles. So at rest, these hydrogen protons along their axes are orientated in random directions. So they'll all have a uh, south-north axis represented by an arrow such as this. And they're all pointing in random directions. However, they'll all spin or wobble on their axis. Okay, and they'll all spin and wobble out of phase. So what I mean by that is, so for example, if I take this hydrogen proton and uh, represent it with this pen, and the pen tip is the north facing axis, it will be pointing this way. However, it will spin also like this. So it will wobble along, the, uh, along its own axis. So although its direction is generally pointing that way, it will still wobble like this, kind of like a, a gyroscope. So this is present at rest in the body. However, when you put the patient in the MRI scan, and the MRI scan's magnet is always turned on. So the, uh, the superconducting magnet so this is them going into the MRI scan. So the superconducting magnet will always be turned on and the, the magnetization vector of that superconducting magnet will be, say for example, in this direction, from a south-north direction, in this direction there. So when that happens, the vast majority of the protons in your body will align themselves to the superconducting magnet's magnetization vector. So they will all be pointing in, or, or the vast majority of them will be pointing in that direction, okay? However, their spins will still be out of phase. So they won't, well, they won't spin out of phase. However, some of them in your body with a higher energy will be able to resist this magnetization vector caused by the superconducting magnet. And, and those particular protons will face exactly the opposite way. And these, these um, protons will have higher energy compared to the other protons which will align up to the magnet. And again, this one will be spinning out of phase as well. So you can see that because the vast majority are aligning up along the axis of the superconducting magnet, the net magnetization vector is this way. So you can say that they all align 
to the net longitudinal magnetization vector of the superconducting magnet. And that's a phrase you need to use when the patient goes into the magnet. So once the patient is in within the superconducting magnet, you then apply a radio frequency pulse. So you impart energy onto these hydrogen protons. So this is your radio frequency pulse. And when you apply the radio frequency pulse, one of two things happen, which is saved for this bit and this bit. So the first thing that happens is that it imparts energy to these lower state protons and it flips them, it flips their axis. And it flips the vast majority of the lower energy protons to a higher energy state and it causes half of them or, or after the, this has all happened it causes half of them to point one way and the other half to point the other way so so they so half of them will remain pointing along the same axis of the superconducting magnet however the other half will be pointing exactly 180 degrees okay and they'll all still spin out of phase at this at this point as a result of this your longitudinal magnet magnetization vector here has been completely obliterated because half of them now point the other way cancelling out any net vector so so the net vector here is is zero the second thing that happens, now I mentioned uh, here, I mean, these two things almost happen simultaneously, but, but the second thing that happens is now they all precess. So that's the other buzzword that you need to use. And what precess means is that the spin, they now all synchronize, meaning that they all spin in phase. So the, not only these ones with the lower energy, they spin in phase. However, the ones with high energy this way, they also spin in phase. So to explain this a bit further, sorry, there's an arrow there as well. To explain this a bit further, if I, if I take uh, my pens again, with, which are my hydrogen protons, and I take it in this stage here, so one is pointing this way here, and the other one is pointing this way here, and they're spinning like this okay, along their axis. So they're, they're wobbling along their axis and they're out of phase. However, once the, the second part of the radio frequency pulse is applied, um, they all sync up, they all precess. So now if I take them here, they all point in the same direction and now they all spin in phase like this. So you can see the difference, they all kind of synchronize. So similarly, these ones down here, if I flip the axis, they too spin in phase, so they all spin like this. You get the idea. As a result, because these are pointing, um, because they all spin in phase, now the net magnetization vector, if we take a, a static uh, image like this, the net magnetization vector is horizontal because half of them are spinning this way and the other half are spinning this way your net magnetization will be transverse. So this is what happens after your radio frequency pulse is applied. However, once it's terminated, this whole process reverses. So first of all, your, um, your, your spin, which is in phase, now becomes out of phase. And that relaxation time, or your T2 relaxation, also known as the spin-spin relaxation, releases energy, this is picked up uh, uh, by, uh, by, by a signal and is converted to an image. This is your T2 weighted image. And the energy release there causes a, a, a T2 weighted image, which is better for picking up pathology and um, is a fluid sensitive sequence. The way I remember it is T2 uh, for H2O, water, so water is high signal. So the second thing that happens is that you have your, uh, your higher energy state, okay? It then flips back to realign 
along your superconducting magnet. So then this regrows your longitudinal net magnetization vector. And the, the time this takes uh, to happen is, is, is called your T1 relaxation. It's also known as your uh, spin lattice relaxation. And this produces your T1 weighted image, uh, which is fat sensitive, is better for picking up um, anatomy. Um, and uh, that, that's, that's how that, that is caused. So I hope, I hope that makes sense. So in some books, you may read that once a radio frequency pulse is applied, the two things that happen is that they all, uh, your, your longitudinal magnetization vector changes to a horizontal magnetization vector. And the second thing that happens is the precession. I mean, that is, that is true overall, but this is how the process occurs is because the first thing that happens is they flip, obliterating your longitudinal magnetization vector. And as a result of precession, you get your transverse magnetization vector. Uh, this is pre precession here. So the other thing you should uh, also mention to the examiner is that you, there are also various sequences uh, that you can apply to manipulate the hydrogen protons getting uh, different signals back. So the other thing that you can manipulate is the rate at which you apply your radio frequency pulse, and this is known as your repetition time, or TR, and your echo time, TE, is the frequency or the time that, that you uh, take to listen for the return signal. You can also use uh, STIR sequences, which uh, stands for short tau inversion recovery, uh, and this is very useful for picking up um, details of fluid or edema in already uh, fat-rich uh, 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 tissues, such as bone marrow, so picking up bone marrow edema. And STIR sequences are very useful in uh, spinal trauma, uh, particularly looking at the uh, posterior longitudinal complex uh, to look for spinal stability. Uh, they also use uh, metal artifact reduction sequences, uh, such as Mars uh, or, or Mars sequences, and this is particularly useful in looking for pseudotumor in metal-on-metal -metal, uh, hip articulations.